10 minutes high. Well, let's have the first slide then. Everyone has his own sketch of the uh, plaza boss, and uh, I've got mine. It's not, it's not that much different. Uh, here I show the quiet uh, plaza boss at L equal to 4, and uh, uh, as you know, the most of the measurements in the plaza paws uh, have been taken here at, uh, in the equatorial region. Can you hear? Okay. Most of the, most of the, the measurements in the plaza paws previously have been taken in the equatorial region. What I'm going to talk about today is the uh, behavior of the plaza paws as seen from the ISIS-1 satellite at mid-latitudes, at altitudes like uh, 3,000 to 3,500 kilometers. Uh, as uh, Peter Banks has pointed out, the coupling between these two regions is quite uncertain. And uh, uh, although there are, there's a high degree of similarity in some res res respects, in particular the response to the magnetic storms uh, between the two regions, uh, there's uh, a difference uh, with regard to the uh, diurnal variation. Uh, before uh, showing some data, I want to point out that uh, previous mass spectrometer observations have shown that uh, uh, this region is primarily uh, uh, O plus at, uh, at these altitudes with concentrations of the order of 100 per cc in the winter, over the winter pole, in the trough over the winter pole. And uh, uh, in this region, densities, uh, it's primarily protons with densities of the order of 10 to the fourth. So one expects, uh, as you cross this boundary, to go from densities like 10 to the fourth to 10 to the second in the winter, in the winter pole when measuring the electron density, which is what we're measuring with the Langmuir probe on ISIS-1. Uh, the first, uh, First, the next slide, I guess I pushed the button here, shows the ISIS-1 satellite, shows the probes and uh, ion trap by Rita Segalin, who will be uh, talking later. Uh, next slide shows uh, the format of the data. You won't be able to see this too well on this size screen, but this is the uh, altitude and the local time and the density and the temperature measured uh, during a week of ISIS uh, one lifetime. We've superposed a week of data because not too much happens to the orbit within a week. Perigee doesn't move too far and the local time doesn't drift too far, so you tend to get a snapshot from data that otherwise uh, uh, is, is rather sparse. Uh, you get a fairly good global coverage in most weeks. So what we have here is densities running from 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 0, and uh, you see apogee here is at the North Pole. This is the South Pole here. We flattened out the Earth. Uh, the, inter the region we're interested in is the high altitude part, again, so that we can be up above the transition from O plus to H plus and therefore talk about the protons. Uh, local times here are, are uh, 2100 and 0900. And uh, this is the point. Uh, this deep trough going down to densities in, in the low 10 to the second range from the protonosphere or uh, plasmasphere on either side. So these are the measurements. This kind of thing is what I'll, I'll be talking about. And in particular, I think the next slide will show uh, a blow up of, of that. Uh, this is 10 to the second to 10 to the fourth. And so it's this kind of variation with dip latitude. It's just a convenient scale. Uh, and one of the difficulties we have here, I think I lost my mic, didn't I? One of the difficulties we have here is defining uh, where the plaza pause is because uh, it's a rather more gradual change, at least in L coordinates, than, it's, than is found out at the equator. Although it's interesting that, that you know, physically in linear dimensions it's about the same size, about a thousand kilometers across it for about a one order of magnitude drop in density. But in L coordinates it is flatter. Uh, we've defined it as the density of one times ten to the third per cc since there's no very a very rapid drop uh, in that region you can identify any more accurately than that. We've also looked at the density at 3 times 10 to the second, which perhaps is a more realistic one if you think in terms of the scale heights along the field line from 3,500 kilometers on up to the equator. Although, as Peter Banks pointed out, we don't know how to, how to calculate the scale height along that region, in that region because of the complications in the, uh, in the physics that's going on there. Uh, this one shows uh, another week in which, instead of being quite well defined, here we have, it, by the way, apogee at the equator, and here you have the plaza pause in both hemispheres. You find that it's quite diffuse. It isn't actually diffuse, it's just superposing a week of data. You find the plaza pause at different locations uh, in response to the pressure uh, due to uh, substorms. 
so that the plasma pause actually goes down to a dip latitude there of 30 degrees and then moves back out towards 60 in that week. Now that's too confusing, so we look at a particular storm. Uh, this is one in 1970 in uh, November, November 1st through 17th is this period here. And we've plotted A sub P on a downward scale to get it in phase with the location of the plasma pause, which we plot here. Uh, now this is the location of the plasma pause as indicated by a crossing of one times 10 to the third, the fall from 10 to the fourth to 10 to the second. We take the middle of that. And you see there's a rather direct relationship. Uh, the, the higher levels of, uh, of AP lead to depressions of the plasma pause uh, down in the vicinity of 2.5 or 6 times 10 to the, or, uh, uh, L. This just indicates it's the 10 to the third crossing that we're using. And then there's this long recovery, some loss again here when another increase in another substorm came along, but uh, the slow recovery of the order of five or six days at L equal to four, which is consistent with Park's results. The next one uh, shows a kind of a statistical relationship uh, between uh, the plaza pause at mid-latitude and Carpenter's relationship uh, based on the equatorial plaza pause. Here we've taken data from November 1st to January 1st in 69, and up here we've plotted the KP, three-hour KP, the 12-hour maximum, uh, to the 12-hour previous maximum. And uh, this is just a plot of Carpenter's uh, relationship for nighttime. Uh, the plaza pause should be at uh, 5.7 minus 0.47 KP, and we put the position where we saw it at mid-latitudes. And you see there's a high degree of similarity there. We are looking at the same kind of thing. But it's also clear that, that uh, the mid-latitude plaza pause isn't as sensitive to the, to the uh, substorm effects. The variations are, are only a, are about two-thirds as great, it turns out, although they're very similar otherwise. Now, the, the uh, shifting gears now, uh, looking at only quiet times, quiet weeks, one can, with the precession of the orbit plane, uh, look at the diurnal variation of the quiet time plasma pause. If you take uh, uh, several tens of these weekly plots in only the quiet weeks, you can get the average position of the plasma pause, and that's what we've shown here. And for both definitions of the density, this is for the density at, at 3 times 10 to the second, only about a factor of 3 higher in density than is seen out at the equator. And this is the uh, ver diurnal variation uh, from, uh, for crossing the density of 1 times 10 to the third, these down here. This is 1 times 10 to the, th to the uh, uh, 3 times 10 to the second. Each one of these points is an average of a whole weeks of data, a whole week of data. Uh, it hasn't been corrected for uh, magnetic activity, so it's only approximate. But the point is, is they've all been treated the same, and one sees at these two levels in the plaza pause, in the mid-latitude plaza pause, uh, little indication of any diurnal variation. Uh, we can see it at four, or we could see it at uh, close to five, an L of five, but at either place, little indication of a diurnal variation. And if one compares this with the equatorial uh, plaza pause, you have the expected result. Uh, the ISIS-1 data at L equal to four, uh, the direct measurements by Taylor and uh, Chappelle showing the bulge in the afternoon and by Carpenter with the Whistler measurements, also a bulge, a smaller one in the afternoon. Uh, these all refer to different uh, uh, eras, so you can't compare them too directly. But the point is the bulge is, uh, is not an obvious feature at mid-latitudes. And so we have a complex coupling between uh, uh, this region, which is clearly a plaza pause, it's the biggest change in density one sees uh, in uh, going around in a polar orbit at these altitudes, 3,000, 4,000 kilometers. Uh, not agreeing with the plaza pause uh, uh, in the afternoon sector. In the uh, evening sector and through midday, they're in fairly good agreement. I'm out running my notes here. Now, uh, let's change to the subject a little bit to the electron temperature in the plaza pause. We have here uh, a different week in which the densities were such that we were able to measure the temperature uh, in the uh, 
in the plasma pause. Here we have the apogee at the, at the equator. On the night side, it's 0400 plasma pause in both hemispheres. And you see the temperature peak. You may have to use your imagination a little bit. Uh, peaks up in that gradient and toward the troughward end, which I think supports what Bill Hansen was saying, that uh, as you approach the trough, you do get a temperature peak. And, and as you go into the trough, the temperature does come down. That's the quiet time behavior. By the way, these are quite broad peaks in temperature and still can be understood in terms of just the normal heat capacity of the protonosphere. doesn't necessarily take any magnetospheric heat source to maintain these temperatures because the time constant is of the order of many days. And, and the uh, plasmasphere is heated up every day by the, uh, uh, on the day side. So this, uh, this is, is nothing new. We're just seeing it again in this context. Uh, the next one shows the temperature, the height profile of the temperature in the plasma pause. Uh, that is in, in one of those temperature peaks. And now we've let the satellite process around so that we can get it at different altitudes. And in an average sense then, this represents a height profile. That profile the dots, each dot is an average of a whole week of temperatures in, in, the, in the peak and as a function of altitude. And one sees here that you, uh, I've, I've put a smooth line through, through the measurements. And uh, we find uh, that the, the heat being conducted uh, down in the ionosphere here, assuming that there are no heat sources uh, here, is uh, around 2 times 10 to the 9th, which is consistent with uh, radar backscatter results at mid-latitudes, uh, Evans' results. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's consistent, almost consistent with his daytime results. So there isn't very much diurnal variation in the heat being conducted down there in quiet times. Uh, by the way, it does appear that uh, we don't have uh, pure heat conduction here, at least Spitzer heat conduction, uh, because I plotted uh, uh, that kind of profile on there, and we fall consistently above it. And that's fairly consistent with the work of Mayer and, and some others who have noted that at low electron densities, heat conduction breaks down, and it's less effective, and so that the temperature gradient rises to conduct the same amount of heat. I don't think there's anything else there. I do have uh, one slide if you want to get into that temperature I don't. motion <laughs> with magnetic activity. We've, we've followed the, the variation during a storm, seeing the temperature go from that broad 